there we go. So we have this chapter three is called The Family Dog. All right, nobody ever came right out and said that fudge was the reason my father lost the Juicio, company, or the Juicio account. But I thought about it. My father said he was glad to be rid of Mr. Yarby. Now he could spend more time on his other clients like the Toddle Bike Company. My father is in charge of their new commercial. I thought maybe he could use me in it since I know how to stand on my head. But he said he wasn't planning on having any, any headstanders in the commercial. My grandma taught me to stand on my head when I spent the night at her house. I can stand up for as long as three minutes. How many of you guys can stand on your head? Anybody? Anybody? Nope, nobody can stand on their head? A couple people? All right. I'm going to go. I forgot to mute everybody. I want to make sure we... Mute. All right. So three minutes he can stand on his head. That's crazy. I showed my mother, my father, and Fudge how I can do it right in the living room. They were all impressed, especially Fudge. He wanted to do it too. So I turned him upside down and tried to teach him but he always tumbled over backwards. Right after I learned to stand on my head, Fudge stopped eating. He did it suddenly. One day he ate fine and the next day nothing. No eat, he told my mother. She didn't pay too much attention to him until the third day. When he still refused to eat, she got upset. You've got to eat, Fudgy, she said. You want to grow up to be big and strong, don't you? No grow, Fudgy said. That night, my mother told my father how worried she was about Fudge. So my father did tricks for him while my mother stood over his chair trying to get some food into his mouth. But nothing worked, not even, not even juggling oranges. Finally, my mother got the brilliant idea of me standing on my head while she fed Fudge. I wasn't very excited about standing on my head in the kitchen. The floor is awfully hard in there, but my mother begged me. She said, it's very important for Fudge to eat. Please help us, Peter. So I stood on my head. When Fudge saw me upside down, he clapped his hands and laughed. When he laughs, he opens his mouth. And that's when my mother stuffed some baked potato into it. But the next morning, I put my foot down. No, I don't want to stand on my head in the kitchen or anywhere else, I added. And if I don't hurry, I'll be late for school. Don't you care about your brother? And if he starves? No, I told her. Peter, what an awful thing to say. Oh, he'll eat when he gets hungry. Why don't you just leave him alone? That afternoon when I came home from school, I found my brother on the floor kitchen floor playing with boxes of cereal and raisins and dried apricots. My mother was begging him to eat. No, 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 Fudge shouted. He made a terrible mess, dumping everything on the floor. Please stand on your head, Peter, my mother said. It's the only way he'll eat. <laughs> no, I told her. I'm not going to stand on my head anymore. I went into my room and slammed the door. I played with the dribble until supper time. Nobody ever worries about me the way they worry about fudge. If I decided not to eat, they'd probably never even notice. That night during dinner, fudge hid under the kitchen table. He said, I'm a doggy. Woof, woof, woof. It was hard to eat with him under the table, pulling on my legs. I waited for my mother to say something but he didn't, or my father to say something, but he didn't. Finally, my mother jumped up. I know, she said, if Fudgy's a doggy, he wants to eat on the floor, right? If you ask me, Fudge never even thought about that, but he liked the idea a lot. He barked and nodded his head, so my mother 
fixed up his plate and put it under the table. And then she reached down and petted him like he was a real dog. My father said, aren't we carrying this a little too far? My mother didn't answer. Fudge ate two bites of his dinner. My mother was satisfied. After a week of having him eat under the table, I felt like we really did have a family dog. I thought how great it would be if we could trade in Fudge for a nice Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> that would solve all of my problems. I'd walk him and feed him and play with him. He could even sleep on the edge of my bed at night. But of course, that was wishful thinking. My brother is here to stay and there's nothing much I can do about it. <laughs> My grandma came over with a trillion ideas about getting Fudge to eat. She tricked him by making milkshakes in the blender. And when Fudge wasn't looking, she threw in an egg. And then she told him if he drank it all up, there would be a surprise on the bottom of the glass. The first time he believed her, he finished the, his milkshake, but all he saw was an empty glass. There wasn't any surprise. Fudge got so mad, he threw the glass down and it smashed into pieces. After that, Grandma left. The next day, my mother dragged Fudge to Dr. Cohn's office. She, he told her to leave him alone and that Fudge would eat when he got hungry. I reminded my mother that I told her the same thing, but for free. But I guess my mother didn't believe either one of us because she took Fudge to see three more doctors. None of them could find a thing wrong with my brother. One doctor even suggested that my mother cook fudge his favorite foods. So that night my mother broiled lamb chops just for fudge. The rest of us ate stew. She served him the two little lamb chops on his plate under the table. Just the smell of them was enough to make my stomach growl. I thought it was mean of my mother to make them for fudge and not me. Fudge looked at his lamb chops for a few minutes. Then he pushed his plate away. No, he said, no chops. Fudgy, you'll starve, my mother cried. You must eat. No chops, cornflakes, Fudge said. Want cornflakes. <laughs> my mother ran to get the cereal for, for, for Fudge. You can eat the chops if you want them, Peter, she told me. I reached down and helped myself to the lamb chops. My mother handed Fudge his bowl of cereal, but he didn't eat it. He sat at my feet and looked up at me. He watched me eat his chops. Eat your cereal, my father said. No, no eat cereal, Fudge yelled. My father was really mad. His face turned bright red and he said, Fudge, you will eat that cereal or you will wear it. This was turning in to be fun after all, I thought and the lamb chops were really tasty. I dipped the bone in some ketchup and chewed away. Fudge messed around with his cereal for a minute and then he looked up at my father and he said, no eat, no eat, no eat. My father wiped his mouth with his napkin, pushed back his chair and got up from the table. What do you guys think he's going to do? If you have an idea what you think he's gonna do, I want you to put it in the chat. <laughs> no, at him. Or, yeah, don't unmute yourself. Just put it in the chat. Uh, any ideas? Anybody got a guess? I don't see your ideas. Anybody writing anything or do you want to just wave at me and tell me? Here, I'll let, I see Avery's hand. Avery, what do you think he's going to do? <laughs> I think he's probably going to get Fudge in trouble. Think you're gonna get Fudge in trouble? Okay, let's try. I was working on writing that. You were working on writing that? We'll put it in the chat. Okay, all right. Oh, so the Van Otter Lewis, they have dump his cereal on him. Okay, let's keep going, let's read. Ugh, I should have brought some Kleenex. That was mine. <laughs> oh, that was yours? Why does it say it's underneath the, I don't know. All right, let me find my spot. So then he, let's see, he got up, okay, and then, okay, so his father wiped his mouth with his napkin, pushed back his chair, and got up from the table. He picked up the bowl of cereal in one hand and fudge in the other. He carried them both into the bathroom. 
I went along nibbling on the bone to see what was going to happen. My father stood fudge in the bathtub and dumped the whole bowl of cereal right over his head. Fudge screamed. He sure can scream loud. My father motioned for me to go back to the kitchen. He joined us in a minute. We sat down and finished our dinner. Fudge kept on screaming. My mother wanted to go to him, but my father told her to stay where she was. He'd had enough of Fudge's monkey business at meal, meal times. I think my mother really was relieved that my father had taken over. For once, my brother got what he deserved, and I was glad. The next day, Fudge sat at the table again in his little red booster chair where he belongs. He ate everything my mother put in front of him. No more doggy, he told us. <laughs> and for a long time after that, his favorite expression was, eat it or wear it. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why. I, I This book just, I just find it quite funny. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So I'm going to unmute you guys. Just because I like to hear your voices. All right, everybody's unmuted. So wave at me. Tell me Hello. what you think about that, fir that first chapter I read. What are your thoughts about... You know, just wave it. Maybe you want to give a comment or something. Brandon, what do you think about that? Um, at first, when you were reading us, I felt bad for whatever the juicy company people for the are Yar for the Yarbies. Yeah, they had a hard time there, and then I feel bad for um, what is his name? The boy, the main, char the main character. Fudge. Fudge. Yeah, no, not Fudge. Peter. His Peter's brother. the main Peter. character. Yeah. Um, Peter. I feel yep. bad for Peter because like he always like got like he never like got attention in his home like uh yeah Fudge always got it yeah and then um I actually feel better for Peter because Fudge got had got the cereal dumped on his head yeah <laughs> so, like, I, I feel yeah. better for him do now. Mr. V, I want to ask you, do you think that's a good parent strategy? I think it's a great idea. I'm totally going to start doing that to the boys when they don't want to eat their food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they do it all the time. Yeah. I, have yeah. a feeling your boys, miles. I have a feeling your boys don't no. have that problem, though. I think they're probably pretty good eaters. No, no, actually, no, they're, no. They're, Are you running no. away? Um, <laughs> that's funny. They're, they're Miles, good I thought good you were running that. away. I'm like, what the? Why did you go? Because you are. Uh, All right, let's give Avery a chance, guys. Avery, what do you think about that last I think chapter? It's pretty funny. <laughs> it is kind of funny. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes parents have to just—they have to be a little tough on their kids. And the father, the father had to keep his word, didn't he? Come say hi. He said, he said to them, if he, if you, you know, don't eat this and you know get busy, then. What am I? What was he gonna do? Dump the cereal on his head, and so he he did it. He kept his word, and I think that's important with parents and kids too. We need to keep our word. So, <laughs> anyways, all right, I'm gonna mute everybody. All right, so let's go on to chapter four. So in chapter four, they use a word. It's called the word is mugged, mugged. All right. Does anybody know? Raise your hand if you know what the word mugged means. If someone got mugged. What would that mean? Does anybody know? Nobody? Nobody's raising their hand? Okay. So mug is kind of like someone steals something from you. They, they might attack you and they would take something from you. So that word is going to be used in here in this particular chapter, all right? But I want you to pay really close attention to some lessons. Peter, he points out a few good things that we need to, we can learn from, okay? He's learned them in his life, and so I want you guys to listen to what those lessons are that he's learned. All right. So chapter four is called My Brother the Bird. <laughs> Just imagine what he's going to do now. All right. So we live near Central Park. On nice days, I like to play there after school. I'm allowed to walk over by myself as long as I'm going to be with friends. My mother doesn't want me hanging around the park alone. For one thing, Jimmy Fargo has been mugged three times, twice for his bike and once for his money. Only he didn't have any to give to the muggers. I've never been mugged, 
but sooner or later, I probably will be. That's not a very good attitude. <laughs> I don't believe, I, I believe that that's not going to happen to me. But he says, my father told me what to do though. Give the muggers whatever they want and try not to get hit in the head. So his father gave him some good advice. Sometimes after you're mugged, you get to go to the police headquarters. So like the police, police station. You look at a bunch of pictures of the crooks to see if you can recognize the guys that mugged you. I think it would be neat to look at all of those pictures. It's not that I want to get mugged because that would be really scary. It's just that Jimmy Fargo's always talking about his visit to police headquarters. My father got mugged once in a subway by two girls and a guy. They took his wallet and his briefcase. He still travels around by subways, but my mother doesn't. She sticks to buses and taxis. And so in the city, like where they live in New York City, they, people don't usually drive their own cars like we do. They usually take public transportation, buses and taxis and things like that. Both my mother and my father are always warning me to never talk to strangers in the park because a lot of dope pushers, now those are people who sell drugs, which we know are bad, they hang around there. But, but um, it says, but taking dope is even dumber than smoking, so nobody's going to hook me. We live on the west side of the park. If I want to get to the zoo and the pony carts, I have to walk all the way um, to the east side. Sometimes my mother walks across the park with Fudge. She likes the animals a lot. He likes the animals a lot, especially the monkeys. He always likes, also likes the helium-filled balloons. But as soon as my mother buys him one, he lets it go. I think he likes to see it float up in the sky. My mother says that's a waste of money and she's not going to buy him any more balloons until he promises not to let go. On Sundays, the park is closed to traffic and you can ride your bicycle all over without worrying about being run down by some crazy driver. Even Fudge can ride. He has a little blue toddle bike, a present from my father's client. And when he's riding, he makes motorcycle noises. Vroom, 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 he yells. In the fall, the leaves turn darker and drop off the trees. Sometimes, there are big leaf piles on the ground and it's fun to jump in them. I never saw bright red, yellow, and orange leaves until the day my father took us for a drive in the country. The reason the leaves don't turn bright colors in New York is the air pollution and that's too bad because yellow and orange and red leaves look really neat. Raise your hand if you guys love the colors in the fall, all those colors, I love that. One nice sunny afternoon, I called for Jimmy, for Jimmy Fargo and we went to the park. Jimmy's the only kid on my block who's in my class at school. Unless you count Sheila, and I don't. She lives in my building on the 10th floor. Henry, the elevator operator, is always making jokes about me and Sheila. He thinks we like each other. The truth is, I can't stand her. She's a real know-it-all, but I've discovered that most girls are. The worst thing about Sheila is the way she's always trying to touch me. And when she does, she yells, Peter's got the cooties, Peter's got the cooties. I don't believe in cooties anymore. When I was in second grade, I used to examine myself to see if I had them, but I never found any. By fourth grade, most kids give up on cooties, but not Sheila. She's still going strong so I have to keep a safe distance from her. My mother thinks Sheila's the greatest. She's so smart, my mother says, and someday she's going to be a real beauty. Now that's the funniest because Sheila looks a lot like the monkeys that Fudge is so crazy about, so maybe she'll look beautiful to some ape, but never to me. Me and Jimmy have this special group of rocks where we like to play when we're in the park. We play secret agent up there. Jimmy can imitate all kinds of foreign accents, probably because his father's a part-time actor. When he's not acting, he teaches a class at the city college. Today, when we got to our rocks, who should be perched up there but Sheila? She was pretending to read a book, 
but I think she was just waiting for me and Jimmy to find out what we'd do when we found her on her on our personal rocks. Hey, Sheila, I said, those are our rocks. Says who? She asked. Come on, Sheila, Jimmy said, climbing up. You know me and Peter, we like to hang out here. Too bad for you, Sheila said. Aw, Sheila, I shouted, go and find yourself another rock. I like this one, she said, as she owned it as if she owned the park. So why don't you two go find another rock? Just then, who should come tearing down the path but Fudge. My mother was right behind him hollering, Fudgy, wait for mommy. But when Fudge gets going, he doesn't wait for anybody. He was after some pigeons. Birdie, here birdie, he called. That brother of mine loves birds but he can't get it through his head that the birds aren't about to let him catch them. Hi, Mom, I said. My mother stopped running. Peter, am I glad to see you. I can't keep up with Fudge. Mrs. Hatcher, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila called, scrambling down from our rock. I'll watch Fudge for you. I'll take very good care of him. Can I, Mrs. Hatcher? Oh, please. Sheila jumped up and down and begged some more. Jimmy gave me and elbow in the ribs. He thought that my mother would let Sheila watch Fudge and then we'd be rid of her. We'd be free to play secret agent. But Jimmy didn't know that my mother would never trust Sheila with her dear little boy. Fudge, in the meantime, was screaming, come back, birdies, come back to Fudgy. Then my mother did a strange thing. She checked her watch and said, you know, I do have to run back to the apartment. I forgot to turn on the oven. <gasps> Whoops. Do you really think you could keep an eye on Fudge for just 10 minutes? Of course I can, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila said. I know all about babysitting from my sister. Sheila's sister Libby is in seventh grade. She's about as beautiful as Sheila. The only difference is she's bigger. My mother hesitated. I don't know, she said. I've never left Fudge before. She looked at me. Peter, what? Will you and Jimmy help Sheila watch Fudge while I run home for a minute? Oh, Mom, do we have to? Please, Peter, I'll be right back. I'll feel better if all three of you are watching him. What do you say? I asked Jimmy. Sure, he answered. Why not? But I'm in charge of Fudgy, aren't I? Sheila asked my mother. Well, I guess so, my mother said to Sheila. You probably do know more about babysitting. Why don't you all take Fudge over to the playground? Then I'll know where to find you. Swell, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila said. Don't you worry, Fudgy will be just fine. My mother turned to Fudge. Now you be a good boy for 10 minutes. Mommy will be right back, okay? Good boy, Fudge said. Good, good, good. As soon as my mother was gone, Fudge took off. Catch me, he hollered. Catch, Fudgy. Go get him, Sheila, I said. You're in charge, remember? Me and Jimmy horsed around while Sheila ran after Fudge. When she caught him, we decided we'd better go to the playground, like my mother said. It was a lot easier to keep an eye on him in a smaller place. Anyway, Fudge likes to climb on the jungle gym and that way he can't get lost. As soon as we got to the playground, Sheila started chasing me. Peter's got the cooties, Peter's got the cooties, she yelled. Cut that out, I said. So she, so she chased Jimmy. Jimmy's got the cooties, Jimmy's got the cooties. Well, me and Jimmy decided to fight back. So what if she, if she's a girl? She started it. We grabbed her by the arms. She squirmed and tried to get away from us, but we wouldn't let go. We hollered really loud. Sheila's got the cooties. Sheila's got the cooties. All three of us were so busy fooling around that we didn't notice Fudge up on the jungle gym until he called, Pita, Pita. That's how he says my name. What? I asked. See? See? 
Fudge flapped his arms around. What do you think he's going to do? Who wants to guess? I see Avery's hand first. Avery, what do you think he's going to do? Hang on. I'm trying to unmute you. What do you think he's going to do? I think he's probably going to jump off the monkey bars. Okay. The rest of you, do you what do you think, Brandon? He's going to try to fly like a bird. He's going to try to fly like a bird. What do you think, Miles? You think he's going to? And Halston? I think that you might be right. Let's find out. All right. Here we go. See, see. Fudge flapped his arms around. Fudgy's a birdie. Fudgy's a birdie. Fly, birdie, fly. That crazy kid. I thought running to the jungle gym with Jimmy and Sheila right behind me, but it was too late. Fudge already found out he didn't have wings. He fell to the ground. He was screaming and crying and his face was a mess of blood. I couldn't even tell where the blood was coming from at first. Then Jimmy handed me his handkerchief, I, which is kind of like a cloth Kleenex sort of a thing people used to use more often, a handkerchief. I don't know how clean it was, but it was better than nothing. I mopped some blood off of Fudge's face. Sheila cried, it wasn't my fault, honest, it wasn't. Oh, be quiet, I told her. She's real, he's really a mess, Jimmy said, inspecting Fudge, and his teeth are gone. Hang on a sec, I lost my, and his teeth are gone too. What are you talking about, I asked Jimmy. Look in his mouth, Jimmy said. Now, now while he's screaming, see, he's got a big space where he used to have his front teeth. Oh no, Sheila screamed. He's right, Fudgy's teeth are gone. Fudge stopped crying for a minute. All gone, he asked. Open your mouth wide, I said. He did, and I looked in. It was true, his top two front teeth were missing. My mother's going to kill you, Sheila, I said. Was I glad I wasn't left in charge of my brother? Sheila cried louder, but it was an accident. He did it himself, himself. You better find his teeth, I said. Where should I look, Sheila asked. On the ground, silly. Sheila crawled around looking for Fudge's teeth while I tried to clean him up some more. See? Fudge said, showing me all his wounds. Boo-boo here and boo-boo here, more boo-boo here. His knees and his elbows were all scraped up. I'm going to get your mother, Jimmy hollered, running out of the playground. Good idea, I yelled. I just can't find them, Sheila said. Well, keep looking, I yelled. Honestly, Peter, there aren't any teeth here. All gone, Fudge asked again. Not all, I told him, just two. Fudge started to scream, want my teeth, want my teeth. Jimmy must have met my mother on her way back to the park because it only took about two minutes for her to get there. But that time, by that time, a whole crowd of kids had gathered around us. Most of them were crawling on the ground like Sheila looking for Fudge's teeth. My mother picked up Fudge. Oh, my baby, my precious, my little love. She kissed him all over. Show mommy where it hurts. Fudge showed her all of his boo-boos and then he said, all gone. What's all gone? My mother asked. His top two front teeth, I said. Oh no! My mother cried. Oh my poor little angel. Sheila sniffled and said, I can't find them. Mrs. Hatcher, I've looked everywhere for Fudge's teeth. They're all gone. He must have swallowed them, my mother said, looking into Fudge's mouth. Oh, Mrs. Hatcher, how awful. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry, Sheila cried. What will happen to him? He'll be all right, Sheila, my mother said. I'm sure it was an accident. Nobody's blaming you. Sheila started bawling again. My mother said, let's go home now. I thought my mother was pr uh, being pretty easy on Sheila. After all, she was left in charge. When we got home, mom washed Fudge's cuts and scrapes with peroxide, and then she called Dr. Cohn. He told her to take Fudge to our dentist, so my mother called Dr. Brown's office and made an appointment for the next day. 
When that was done, she gave Fudge some socks to play, to play with. I went into the kitchen to have a glass of juice. My mother followed me. Peter Warren Hatcher, she, she said, I'm sorry that I can't trust you for just 10 minutes. Me? I asked. Trust me? What's this got to do with me? My mother raised her voice. I left your brother with you for 10 minutes and just look at what happened. I'm disgusted with you. It was Sheila's fault, I said. You said Sheila was in charge. So how come you're mad at me and not at Sheila? I just am, my mother shouted. I ran to my room and slammed the door. I watched Dribble walk around on his favorite rock. My mother's the meanest mother in the whole world, I told my turtle. She loves fudge more than me. She doesn't even love me anymore. She doesn't even like me. Maybe I'm not her real son. Maybe somebody left me in a basket at her doorstep. My real mother's probably a beautiful princess. I'll bet she'd like to have me back. Nobody needs me around here, that's for sure. I didn't eat much supper that night and I had a lot of trouble falling asleep. The next morning, my mother came into my room and sat down on my bed. I didn't look at her. Peter, she said. I didn't answer. Peter, I said some things yesterday, yesterday that I didn't really mean. I looked at her. Honest? I asked. Yes. You see, I was very upset over Fudge's accident and I had to blame somebody, so I picked on you. Yes, I said, you sure did. It wasn't your fault though, I know that. It was an accident. It could have happened even if I had been in the playground myself. He wanted to fly, I said. He thought he was a bird. I don't think he'll try to fly again, my mother said. Me either, I told her. Then we both laughed, and I knew she was my real mother after all. Gosh. All right, so that's the end of that. Let's unmute everybody. All right, so that, there we go. Brandon, I got to unmute you. There it is. All right, so that chapter, that was a lo another long chapter. These chapters get long. So tell me, what that, you know what, that whole situation with Peter and his mom, that, you know what, she was pretty upset. Have you guys ever had someone get upset? Raise your hand if you've ever had someone get upset like that before. Yeah. Around you. Anybody ever getting upset before? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. 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 And so. Yeah, what I've been in that you? same situation as he has. You, who said that, Brandon? Yeah. So, Brandon, do you want to share a little bit about what about what happened in your situation? Um. So my cousin Kalen, uh, he was come. He came over to my house. Yeah. Um. 